Hello, everyone. So I am Lena Sundqvist, CEO of Climon. And when I started as CEO one and a half years ago, Climon was a turnaround. So what I will present to you today is what we at Climon do and also our focus areas in order to be successful. So we all know here that the world needs more electricity. We in Sweden need much more electricity. Europe needs more electricity and the rest of the world needs even more electricity. And this at the same time as we need to cut CO2 emissions and come away from fossil fuels. And Climon's contribution to this is that we convert heat into electricity. And this heat can come from a variety of sources. There is waste heat available on board ships. There is waste heat available on power stations. There is waste heat available in industrial processes all across the world. And there is also geothermal heat available, which can be used for geothermal power. And what we do in our technology, this is an ORC system, organic Rankine cycle. This technology has been known for a very long time. And what we do in our process is a very efficient way of converting heat into electricity. And the heat that we are using is between 75 to 100 degrees. There we are very efficient in converting this heat into electricity. And the way we do this is that heat is coming into our process. It is then heating up a liquid circulating into our process. And inside our units, this liquid is then heated up and it has a lower boiling point than water. So we can use heat from 75 to 100 degrees, heat up this liquid, it then becomes a vapor, goes into a turbine and then to a generator, becoming electricity. Then it's cooled down in a condenser and then being pumped around. So as long as there is heat available coming into our system, there is also cold source, then we can continuously produce electricity in our process. Climon was founded in 2011. We are today around 50 employees. The majority of us are based in Kista, outside Stockholm, at our headquarters. We have around 40 of our heat power units in operation today. And in 2017, Climon was listed on Nasdaq First North. The majority of our units today, around 30 units, are on board ships trading globally in the world. We also are working within power generation, employing units there this year. We are also in industrial waste heat. For example, we have an installation at SSAB steel mill in Borlänge, continuously producing electricity. And this unit has been in operation there for six years, still producing electricity there. And we also have uh, our units installed in geothermal, both in Iceland and in Japan. And the units that we have in operation today is heat power 150. That's the 40 units we have in operation today. This is a very efficient system. Unfortunately, this is not as cost effective system as we would like it to be. That is why we have developed a new system called heat power 300. And I will come back to this. And this system, it's much more cost efficient. So this is what we will base our business on going forward. And to all of our system, we also have a system that we call Climon Live. And this is for us in order to monitor all our system globally. So we can see the operational profile of all our system in operation today at our uh, headquarters from Shista. So this is our new system, and when developing this system, we've taken all the knowledge with us from our previous system, both from the system as such, but also from all the customer installations we have done. So when developing this system, we have really designed it to be optimal for our customer cases. So, and I'm a real 
a believer in market-driven R&D, so this has really been developed with our customers in mind and our customer processes in mind. And one important driver has been to cut the cost of this system. And we've been able to cut the cost per produced kilowatt hour by 50% with this system compared to the previous system. And this gives them both us and also our customers much better business cases and profitable installations for the customers and also a profitable product and business for us. And when we calculate business case, we do it together with our customers. This is then included both the cost for our system, it is including the installation cost for the customer, and it's also including the operational cost of our system. And for most of our customers, they want to have payback time of five years or less than five years. And this is something that we see now that we are achieving with this new product. And also, we have built this platform in order to comply with all various certifications in the areas and the markets we want to be in. So first of all, this system is complying with the relevant maritime legislations and certifications like DNV, Lloyds, ABS. And it is also applying to European demands when we put this system on the European market. So it also needs to have CE certification which we are applying now to this system. And we also make sure that this has grid code compliance, because if you, take, if you produce electricity and put it on the grid, you also need to have grid code compliance. So we are sure now that we can live up to all this certification and customer demands with this new system. So the different markets we work on then, the maritime market is very important for us, and this was the uh, background of where Climon started back in 2011. And there is a big drive now in the maritime market, both to cut cost and make fuel or ships more fuel uh, efficient, and also to decarbonize the fleet, making ships more energy efficient. And this is something that we really are achieving with this product, both to cut the cost of fuel and to lower the CO2 emissions. And the way we do this is that when fuel is coming into a ship, around 50% of the energy in the fuel is used for propulsion of the ship, to drive the ship forward. And the rest is becoming waste heat from the engine. And we can take part of this waste heat and convert that into electricity. So the ship does not need to burn additional fuel uh, to produce electricity on board. And there's also coming a lot of legislation now for the shipping industry, both from IMO, which is the International Mar Maritime Organization to cut CO2 emissions, and also more regional legislation. For example, from EU, they including the maritime industry in uh, the EU's emission trading scheme. So ships entering European ports in the future need to pay carbon tax. So last year in September, we launched this system to the maritime market at SMM in Hamburg, which is the world's largest maritime exhibition. And what you see on the picture here is me and some of my fantastic maritime colleagues, which has a lot of experience uh, working in the marine industry. And since then, we have had a lot of intensive contacts with customer dialogues, negotiations, both with ship owners and also with shipyards for our Heat Power 300 system. And what we do then together with our customers is that we calculate on how much fuel and how much CO2 that they can save with our system. So what you see here to, uh, to your right is an example business case on a container vessel. So then we have calculated together with that ship owner how much fuel and how much CO2 that we can save. And what you see here on the pictures is also 
the customer installations that we have today with our Heat Power 150 system. So that is installed on board Virgin Voyager ships. It's installed on Maersk, on Viking Line, and also on Havila ships trading on the Norwegian coast. And in the world, there is around 1,500 to 1,700 ships being built, large ships being built every year. And we see that our system is applicable on around 30% of those. So that gives us an annual addressable market of around 500 to 600 ships, new built ships. And in addition to this, we also have discussion on with ship owners on installing this system on, on retrofit vessels or on existing ships. Then another market that is really interesting for us is also to put this system on land, so within the energy and industry field. And we know, also as I said in the beginning, that the world needs much more electricity. And also, as we all know, the cost of electricity has gone up a lot. So there's more pressures now to produce electricity, and a lot of industries are looking into ways of producing more electricity and to, or to uh, buy less electricity from the grid. So this is an area that we're working on a lot as well, both on power stations. So there is a lot of power stations in the world that has an engine, which is very similar to the applications that we have on board ships. And this is an example of this, it's what you see to the right here. It's an installation in the UK where it is a power plant with an engine where we take the waste heat from the engine, produce more electricity. And calculating on these cases, we can produce around 3 to 4% more electricity on this side by implementing our units there. And on this side, they also have carbon capture on it, so making this a, a net zero carbon installation. So this can be used both as baseload power and also to compensate for variations in the grid. And UK has about the same challenges as the rest of Europe, that they have too little electricity, very high cost of electricity. They have a lot of wind power, but we all know that I mean, wind power is great, but it does not produce 24-7. And then they need to have other solutions that can be used as baseload power. And this is one of the solutions. So at the first site being constructed now, you see two of my other colleagues. So it's our R&D manager you see here and one of our great sales managers. And in this site is the first one of this kind being built now in UK, and our Heat Power 150 units will be installed on this site. It will be operational during this year with also our units on it. And there's now being in discussion and planning of several more of these plants, and in additional plants coming up, it will then be our Heat Power 300 system that will be applied. And in addition to this, there is a lot of engine manufacturers now looking into how can they increase efficiency of their, of their engines. And there has been a lot of work from engine manufacturers all over the years to increase the efficiency of their engines. But that comes sort of to an end. It's difficult to do much more. But when applying our type of ORC systems, which takes the jacket water or the cooling water from the engine, we see that we can increase the output of around 3 to 4% of the engine installation. So that is also a very interesting area for us. And then there's also a lot of industries contacting us now in Sweden, Europe, and also from the rest of the world. And they see that it's much more expensive for them now to buy electricity from the grid. Sometimes it's a challenge for them to even get electricity from the grid at the same time as they see as they have waste heat available at their plant. So they are now coming to us and see if we can produce electricity at their plant. And for our land-based industry, our current market focus is within EU and the UK. 
So our focus now going forward is to get our Heat Power 300 system to the market, make sure that it works according to customer specifications, and to ramp up our production and then increasing the sales volumes of our Heat Power 300 system. So, thank you. See if I also get some questions. Sorry, it was just a message from the host here. Uh, great. Well, Lena, this is very exciting with the 300 uh, apparatus and uh, going forward on that one. Um, you've had quite a year in terms of stock volatility. Yeah. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to say something about this? I don't want to talk about the stock market price, and I'm not, I should not talk about that. I mean, the stock market price is what it is. Mm. Uh, just looking at the, what's happened during the year. Yeah, what's happened during the year. I mean, I took over Climb One in a challenging time. It has just been announced a big decrease in order backlog just before I started. It was also announced a cost efficiency program. So we have cut a lot of cost and unfortunately had to say goodbye to a lot of fantastic colleagues. So we have done a lot of things now, just <coughs> getting our team in place at Climb On. We have a fantastic team in place. It's the most fantastic persons I've ever worked with and also worked really, really dedicated on this new product because it is a challenge, of course, to be in between two product generations. But this was just a way we had to do in order to make profitable business cases going forward. Restructuring. Yeah, restructuring and really a turnaround. Challenging, tough, but also extremely uh, yeah, fantastic in a way mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. Good. So you mentioned on the, on the shipping side, yeah. the, the, the devices putting on, on, on the boats, uh, that the shipping, the boats will be now be into the ETS, the, the, uh, the, the system uh, paying for, for, for polluting. Yeah. So that holds quite a potential, doesn't it? Because this has not been the case before. And now, of course, as you mentioned, the, the ship owners and the transporters, uh, the logistic companies have to look at this. Yeah. So, so if you invest in Climb On, how, how important is the, the maritime versus the, uh, the, uh, the land-based solutions, if you, if you, if you, ca if you ca calculate into that, this, the ETS news? Yeah, uh, the ETS is, of course, part of it. Mm. For the maritime industry, it's both important how much fuel the ship owners can save, and before we only calculated our business cases only on the fuel savings. Now we can also include CO2 savings as, and put a cost on it, whereas it's not clear yet exactly what the ship owners is going to pay for putting out CO2. Mm. So uh, there's still some variations there. And when we look into our maritime business versus our land-based business, I think both is very important for us and it is really good to have both. And since we can apply more or less the same type of system, though with some modifications on it, but this new system that we put on the market is a platform which can be easily adaptable for different markets. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great to have both those markets and work with them in parallel. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Lena, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.